It's not every day that we actually set out to try and break something, but that is the case uh, with the Panasonic Toughbook uh, 55. Tiernan Ray is here with us now to talk about this. And this was your quest, Tiernan, that you wanted to see if you could actually break this tough computer. So let's just start with the, you know, the computer itself and explaining it to us and then what you did to actually attempt to break it. Yeah, it is an unusual situation, Karen. Panasonic Corporation sent me one of the latest models of a family of computers that have been making for a long time, the Toughbook. This is a ruggedized computer. It's got a magnesium uh, casing that's supposed to be resistant to drops and spills and things like that. And the editors this evening had said, hey, why don't you give it a try trying to break this thing? Uh, so what I did was a couple of things. I threw it down the steps of my front porch of my brownstone building in New York, and I poured hot coffee on it. And um, initially it seemed like things went pretty well. Uh, I was noticing that the thing still functioned after both of those incidents. There was no cracks to the screen or anything like that. So phase one was yay Panasonic. This tough, ruggedized laptop uh, for about $2,500 can stand up to all kinds of punishment. <laughs> Indeed, and, and throwing it down the steps. I'm sure that was quite a sight for your neighbors. Uh, all right, so Tiernan, this is not your 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 average everyday user is not, you know, going to use this this type of computer. So who is this actually geared towards? You might find this, Karen, in the, on the dashboard of the cop cruiser. I'll police use this as a database to look up felons or if they come up to you and take your ID and want to check your ID with the state computer, they'll go into this laptop in their car to look you up. Also, electricians up on the utility pole, when they're fixing wires, uh, they may actually carry one of these up the pole with them. Uh, it's used by first responders uh, in accidents, sites, and disasters. Um, so it, it has a lot of utility for people in very demanding kinds of professions where it's got to stand up to a certain degree of punishment. Okay, and, and as it turns out though, you actually did break it, correct? Yeah. Karen, I was going to come on here uh, with just a victory story for Panasonic, uh, and then I told you we had to wait because I had to do some extra research. Um, when we were going to film our initial video, I tried to turn this thing on, it would turn on. So uh, I took it to a genius computer repair guy here in New York, a man named Ludovic, who's with a service called B4 Computers, and he took a look, he opened it up, he said, wow, you still got coffee. What happens is there's, if the, the keyboard uh, is removable, uh, this whole area here. If you take it up, uh, it's just a couple screws. What you find is there's puddles of coffee, still liquid coffee sitting underneath it. And unfortunately, there are also two little holes that go from the layer of metal that's beneath the keyboard down to the circuit board. So what Ludovic told me is probably what happened is that coffee sticks around and it can seep through those holes. And once it gets down to the circuitry, it can corrode the circuitry. And so as a consequence, at this point, it's not turning on. It may need some replacement components on its circuit board. So burning hot coffee, um, maybe not the best thing to pour all over the keyboard. Actually, uh, it seems to be that, you know, unlike a splash, simple splash of water, um, that can actually do damage. All right, so probably best to keep the coffee uh, away from it. All right, so Tiernan, then what, you know, what's the takeaway here? What's the moral of the story? Yeah, this thing is um, resistant to splashes, resistant to drops, uh, but if you try hard enough, you can actually do some damage. So you want to, uh, uh, at the same time, try to be somewhat careful with it. For example, if you get some splashes of water or coffee on it, anything like that, one of the pro tips is to turn the thing upside down so that the screen is hanging off the side of the table and the keyboard this area is lying flat on a cloth on the table so that anything that's liquid that might have gotten under the keyboard has a chance to seep out of it. So this thing is tough, um, but you actually can, if you set out to do some damage, conceivably do some damage. Uh, there may be some issues that Panasonic wants to look into with the two little holes that sit in the keyboard, but uh, basically, if you don't set out to do damage to it, it can withstand a lot, uh, and so it's a good investment if you're in some kind of profession that has especially demanding circumstances. All right, you certainly proved that, uh, Tiernan. Well, we appreciate that. And Tiernan's uh, first and second article, of course, and much more on the Panasonic Toughbook 55 can be found on ZDNet. Thanks so much for watching.